This right here is my first ever telescope and probably the telescope that got me interested in astronomy for real. And as you can probably see, this thing um, hasn't really seen any light for quite a while. And that's because it's it kind of in a broken state and um, today I want to see if we can fix it. All right, come with me and I'll show you what we're dealing with here. There's a few things we need to fix. First of all, you can see here that the finder here is just being held on by, back, by packing tape as this one got a knock at some point and this bracket broke. We're going to see if we can 3D print something new to, uh, to put on there. And then it just needs a good dusting. But what I want to check here is if we take... There we go. Oh, that's perfect. So that's what we want to see, that the optics in here is in perfect condition. I don't see what I'm looking for here is if there's any kind of like fungal growth or anything like that on the um, on the optics, but I don't see anything at all, which is really good because sometimes when the telescope's been sitting for a while, you can end up with having mold grow on the lenses. And if we had that, then I'm not sure I would undertake this because then I would have to completely disassemble the optical tube and I don't really feel like doing that. But first, let's get some of this dust off, and then we're going to try to power it on and see if it actually still functions. Because if I recall correctly, it does have more issues than just a broken finder up here on the top. So, I have my box of controllers, because I have a bunch of spares for some reason. Cable on this, cable in this one, and I have a power supply here. Oh no! My power supply doesn't doesn't work. God damn it. <sighs> okay, let's see if we have any more lock this time. Lock in the hand controller. I think we are golden. Oh, maybe I was too early here. It's just stuck here on the warning. This one. Oh, well, that's not a good sound. See, that's one of the problems we need to try and fix. Yeah, we have altitude. Azimuth is not good at all. I can't see any screws. These holes here and here are just for mounting it to the tripod. So, so those, uh, that's not it. There might be something hidden on the rubber feet. That's quite common. Oh, but this looks good. I think we're in. Okay, that was way easier than I thought. So, well, that's that's tight. But that's well, those wires are really tight here. But that's weird because if you see, they they don't wind like they're just built like that. They just really put a lot of strain on these wires here. That's okay. So I bet this is the motor that has the problem because you can see this one here is broken, right? We have a broken, broken thing here. That one. That's not supposed to be like that. Okay, and this looks like I can just, yeah, pull that off. And remember that the wires, the side where the wire goes in, points towards the circuit board. Yeah, okay. I got it back in place. Now you can see this bracket here was supposed to connect there, holding that in place. That broken piece of plastic is what caused this entire telescope to fail.
it took me multiple iterations of tweaking minor things like clearances and axle alignment just to make sure that the entire gearbox was running as smoothly as it would have coming out of the factory. I think I actually improved on the original design by beefing up some of the areas, especially around the area where the axle has broken off, just to try and give it a little bit more strength so that this wouldn't happen in the future. Once I finally got something that I was happy with, I installed it into the telescope and I wanted to just give it a very quick test just to see if it would actually function. I didn't have my main camera running at the time, um, I just had my phone recording b-roll, but um, well, this is how it went. So it was back to the drawing board and I disassembled the entire telescope again. I took the newly assembled gearbox out as I figured it's probably there that I made a mistake when I assembled it or misaligned something. And I tried to run it outside the telescope and it was running fine honestly in both directions. This made me quite nervous as now I'm thinking oh my god I've broken something further in and I not need to disassemble it further. But before I began unscrewing things, I decided just to sanity check it and just manually turn the gear that would turn the base. And I could see that the base would turn smoothly in both directions with no clunking noises or anything like that as we heard in the test before. So I reassembled the telescope for the God knows how many times just to get a feeling and get a better look at what was actually going on. And now nothing was replying. Nothing was moving, not even the gearbox would move on its own. And I was afraid now I just broke the thing completely. So I broke out the multimeter and began poking around. And it looked like all the connections I could reach at least was good. I wasn't really sure what the voltage was supposed to be, but none of them was zero. So I figured that was a good sign. And eventually it turned out it was just one of the headers that wasn't seated properly. And after that was seated, the whole thing was moving around again. So that means there could only be one thing wrong, and that would be the interface between the gearbox and the gear on the base was not aligning up correctly. And upon further inspection, I could actually see that the uh, like elongated gear here was slightly crooked. Not by much, but ever so slightly. So I went back into my 3D modeling software and I moved the hole about a millimeter, reprinted, reassembled. And we are back in business. It looks like the initial problem is now fixed and the base is now turning correctly in both directions. So now I could turn my attention to the broken red dot finder. The assembly here was kind of weird to be honest. There were two holes underneath where the mounter was supposed to be. I figured there would be screws there, bolts maybe. There were no threads so I figured it was just like basically wood screws that were dig into the plastic. The whole base was built with a hard upper part and a soft rubber lower part that looked like those two were just like glued together. So I just found two new screws and made it dig into the plastic. It seems to be sturdy enough, so I figured, hey, easy fix. And with that, a lot of nostalgia has been restored, at least for me. Um, I'm looking forward to getting this thing out again, just to probably do a little bit of observations with it, a visual, but Happy to see this thing up and running and functioning again with luckily some very cheap repairs. Luckily, I don't have to run sponsors on this channel and I don't have to do that because the channel is sponsored through the sale of my book, The Cosmic Field Guide. So if you're getting into astrophotography, if um, you want a handy little book that you can take with you out in the dark with all the fancy tables and graphs and, and things, then this is the book for you. Go check it out on deepspacebooks.com. <laughs> That's a lot with bolts as well. This is also bolts. So this is like bolts and nuts and bolts. All of these, so I need to be very careful. <laughs>